All right, guys, welcome back to another video. And this one, we're doing another driving lessons video. Seems like you guys like those in the past. Today's video, we are going to feature another other than Carlos, the eighth scale master. That's what I'm gonna call you from now on, the eighth scale master. <laughs> Carlos, I've been watching for the past couple years, and he's been going really fast, and he's getting a lot faster. Of some days, he out hot laps me. But I think, Carlos, and I'm not being mean, would you say your biggest challenge is getting that speed to last the whole five the whole minutes? Race. Yeah. So, like, if you talk about your experience over the past few years, like, where would you categorize yourself and the things that you're currently working on? So, I'm currently working on like exiting the corner and entering the corner better, uh, running apexes, uh, not overshooting the jumps. Uh, that's one of my biggest issues because uh, I've obsessed the car a lot. Uh, but right now, I mean, like, last year we had uh, some pretty good runs in each truggy. We ran the series last year in first place. And uh, nothing now, we're going to try and work on more consistency for sure. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and he's going to throw his, your e truggy down, right? He's going to throw his e truggy out there, take a couple laps. And what I want to do is just watch and see if there's some areas where it seems like he's maybe pushing the car a little bit or just something that we can work on immediately. So does that sound good? Yes. Sounds All right, great. Dude, go rip it. So He's out there turning some laps and I want to get down on the track so that I can hear the vehicle a little bit better and kind of see up close what he's doing. So it's kind of not fair because Carlos, this is literally his track and you've probably put like thousands of laps in on this layout. Yeah. So without me saying anything, I want to hear it from you. Like, where do you feel like specifically on this track right now, what's going on? Um, so like what's going on as far as? Like if you're like, okay, if I had to tell myself, coach myself to go faster, what are the things that you're feeling and seeing right so, now? So I'm feeling you got to downside everything. Um, you got to enter the corners correctly. You got to hug the corners because it's a tight track. Um, and just mainly like not over jumping, not over jumping. Okay. The advantage I have here, because I know Carlos a little bit and I've watched him for quite some time, is that he knows how to do the, um, what would you call it? Like kick it into the next gear. Yes. Like you know how to go faster, you know how to find that. But then I think that the biggest challenge that I've seen over time and a little bit today is that you go to that gear kind of like too much. Yes. I think that if you learned, you know, I'm not telling yes. you anything you yes, don't know, course. but if you back it off, yes, we all know slower is faster. We've heard yes. that so many times. Yes. And I think that like the couple areas that I was watching you was the far right corner and on the lander over here, two completely different corners, but the same concept applies. Yes. If you just, go a little bit slower, tighten it up, even like wait to get on the throttle a little bit longer. Like you just kind of like, you're blowing the corner. So then you're like, well, it's four wheel drive, baby, yeah. let's go. <laughs> so then you just kind of pin it and you end up burning up rubber, you drain battery, you burn fuel, whatever the scenario would be. So let's maybe go out and do another session where you kind of slower? just literally go slower. Like okay. if I saw you one lap where you double singled on this instead, because you were afraid you were gonna case it, like. Let's aim for that. Okay. And let's just Sounds see good. if we can go a little bit slower. All right. right. So I know we it's do hard that. because Carlos is Mr. Fast guy, Mr. Whip Speedy. guy. <laughs> but all right, let's slow it down and let's see yeah. if we get a better result. Okay. Sounds okay. good. 
this triple is pretty tricky like it's pretty tight i mean it's the biggest jump on the track and it immediately goes into a 180 right there so your margin for error is like eek, literally it's like feet not even it's a yep. foot yep right so i'm curious I'm, this isn't a right or a wrong answer thing what is your your throttle application over here through this corner like from the downside of the so double to the face this, what are you doing this all begins on the on the back corner before that double because you have to run an apex right there to be able to not overshoot that double and offset the car and then have to break and turn. So the whole thing is to land on the lander and then carry that speed to the double. You don't have to go full throttle, none of that. Just a little bit of pop goes a long ways on, the, on that triple. You just gotta make sure you, you hit it on the correct spot. So when I was out here today, the timing that I like to do was you get the double, as long as you're clean coming into the apex, I would kind of peg it up to the face and then I would kind of like scrub and let the car float yes. over the triple. Are yes. you doing that or are you kind Sometimes. of throttling through the face? De depending on how I'm coming into the triple. If I'm coming in too hot, yes, I'll scrub a little bit. If I'm coming in just regular, no, I'm just letting it float on the, on letting it float. That's it on the triple. That truck definitely has enough motor to probably jump it clear out of the park. Oh, yeah. So it's more managing the power so that you can stay on the track, hit your marks, etc. So there's a couple different options there. I, the experience I had on the track today was if you jump with throttle going all the way through the face, your car goes really high and then it becomes a little bit tricky once you come back down and land. Whereas when I scrubbed the face and I was throttled up to the face and then I let it kind of case and bottom out and then just kind of shoot a little bit flatter and straighter, I could manage the landing just a little bit better. It seemed that my jumps and landings were a little bit more consistent. So. I'll be curious to see what Carlos is doing, listen to his car, and then just see what the result is. Twenty-six point seven. Okay, so I don't know how well it's coming through the camera and what you guys are seeing on this video, but in that session, I actually, I was thinking to myself, I was like, this isn't the Carlos. Like if I, I could, you know how sometimes you can like know who's on the track yeah. just by their throttle, <laughs> yeah. like their throttle characteristic. I usually know when Carlos is on the track and I'm not trying to put a dig on you is when I just hear it just like punch it, whip in, <laughs> just like super aggressive, but going fast, like I'll hear the lap times. I'm like, yeah, that's probably Carlos or Kenny. It's either you yeah. or Kenny. Yeah. You guys, it's like the same thing. But anyways, so that time out, we were joking actually on the way down on the driver's stand that your your lap times, like audibly, it almost sounded like you weren't on the gas at all. I wasn't. Like you were just like rolling. Roll more. You were letting it roll through the mid corner. You would let it ease into the entry roll through the mid corner and then you rolled on the throttle yes. like it was just super smooth yes. everything was about like tire spin management it yes. sounded like now the one thing i'll say we know that like the track this is a beautiful track but it's not perfect Thank right you. now yes sir it's a little dusty but this area over here in particular i liked how you kind of just let the car do whatever it was going to do wherever you were going to land yes. and then you just nicely negotiated it back on throttle yes so what did you feel was the difference in that so, round? So in that round, I made sure to downside everything mm. and it worked out to my favor. I, that's actually one of the best runs I've had in the truggy so far. And um, yeah, I was basically just carrying my speed into the, into, the, into the triple, just letting it land nice, making sure that the truck lands, you know, 
face down first, you know, plant it nice, and then just letting it carry that speed through the corner because the truck has tons of speed. And on the right tire, it was, it was money. Going back to my point earlier about you're really good at being able to find that extra gear for your own performance. Driving there constantly, well, I mean, that's what a world champion, a national champ, exactly. that's who they are, that's what they can do. But I think even on their level, they know the limitation of, do I run it? Balls to the wall for 10, 15, 20 minutes, yeah. whatever it is, or am I going to be mildly conservative? Like dial it back, I mean, what would you say? Like 3% away would, from yeah. 100, you I would know? say yeah, like 5%, like 3% away from 100. That gives you that, um, I was gonna say that, Con, you know, consistency. Consistency. There yeah, you know. yeah, yeah. Consistency. Okay. <laughs> so I would say that Carlos is at that point right now where he has so much talent and ability that it's hard for me to say anything that would immediately make improvements right now. Um, there's honestly things that he could probably watch me go around the track and he could point out I things that I'm do. doing wrong. No, no, not, not like that. I'm saying like I always watch you run and you run really clean lines all the time. <laughs> <laughs> the thing that I've talked about a lot on the channel and the thing that I would argue is like my, my strongest characteristic is that I try to err on the side of consistency. I'm not going to go out there and try to hot lap and hero lap every single session. Consistency, consistency, consistency. And even while I was getting all those B-roll clips, you guys didn't get to hear it consecutively, but I think that there was a three lap sequence where you did 24-4, 24-4, 24-5. And I was like, holy cow, that is some consistent yes, <laughs> lap times, especially on this track, which is really technical and difficult. So I think that it's just a matter of putting in those laps and going out there and for you. I'd say for you, the best thing is to go out there and probably have like these sessions of practice where you mentally go, I'm gonna drive at 90% on purpose and then listen to the lap times and see what's happening. I agree. To summarize, the, the hero speed is there. Going slower is how you're going to consistently stay at that level. Yeah. And then the deception for, and I am guilty of this. It's like the when in doubt, just grab more throttle, grab more steering and just go faster. Yeah. And then we all know that that usually doesn't pan out doesn't that way. Work out. So slower is faster. Listen to your lap times. Look at the sheets so that we're not just, you know, being uneducated. Exactly. And then, like you were saying, hit your marks. Hit the downsides of the jumps. Roll through the corner. Ease onto the throttle. And then when you develop those habits of consistency in control, then every once in a while you can you know, kick it up a notch. <laughs> Get a little spicy. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So. Yeah. Carlos, you did good, man. Thank you, brother. Thank Appreciate you for coming you. out. It was awesome. You guys, if you have an idea for a particular driving lesson episode, drop in a comment down below. And then I'll go ahead and link down below Triple Nickel Raceway, the Facebook page. So if you guys are in Central yes, Florida and want to come out Carlos's awesome track, you can do so. So that's going to be it for this one. Thanks for watching, guys. We will see you in the next one. Carlos, will you do the honors?